Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out in the frigid weather of Northwest Indiana. Today we're blessed with temperatures that are just a few degrees above zero. We're not complaining because I know a lot of you guys up in Canada always like to make fun of us about complaining about being zero degrees outside. Oh, how cute. I get it guys, you live in much colder climates, but for us this is pretty stinking cold and it's been relentless. We're like three weeks into it. But what brings us out into the frigid weather? This little guy brings us out into the frigid weather. So if you watch the channel, you'll know I'm kind of a Milserp nut. I like military style firearms, hence the Military Arms channel. And one of the things I like to collect is military surplus firearms, and that's what I have here in my hands. Now, the cool thing about military surplus firearms is the fact that when you catch them coming into the country in the beginning, the prices are really low. And from there, the prices only start to go up as the supply starts to dwindle. Take the Mosin Nagants, for example. The Mosin Nagants used to be everywhere and $99, and now they're not so available, and the prices are creeping up. I was surfing Classic Firearms. It's a site I, t I go to all the time because they're always finding new and interesting military surplus firearms. And I noticed that they had this unique M57 uh, uh, Tokarev. I almost forgot what I had in my hands as a Tokarev. The Tokarev is a military service handgun that carried the Russians through the Second World War and remained in service until the early 1950s when it was replaced by the Makarov handgun, which is one of my favorite military handguns of all time. Now this little guy shoots a 762 by 25 uh, cartridge, which is a little hot rod. We have some Winchester white box ammunition here with an 85 grain projectile. And on the back of the box, it's saying it's doing 1600 feet per second with that 85 grain projectile. But what's really interesting about it, which I've shown in past videos, is that this cartridge can, can defeat some soft armor, like two way soft body armor. It is a cannon, but it's an extremely pleasant to shoot cannon. This little guy, imported by Classic Firearms, or not imported, but sold by Classic Firearms, is a M57, which would make it Yugoslavian or Serbian, and it's a little bit different than its Russian T33, T which is Tula Tokarev Model 33. It's a little bit different than the, the TT33 in a number of different areas, but one of the most notable is the fact that the grip is a little bit longer. It accommodates one extra round. This round, or I'm sorry, this handgun holds nine rounds of ammunition in its magazine, whereas the original TT33 held uh, eight rounds, one round less. So, it's so cold out here, I have brain freeze, guys. It's like when you take a big sip of a Slurpee or something like that, and your whole body goes, and you can't really think or move. Yeah, that's me right now. So anyway, we're gonna shoot this little guy. We'll tear it down, show you what it's all about, talk a little bit about the features of this handgun and why I found it so interesting and what makes it unique from other Tokarevs that have been imported from various different countries. And we'll get to that, like I said, a little bit later in the video. But right now, we're gonna take some of this Winchester white box ammunition I showed you which you can pick up from Freedom Munitions because they don't just sell their own brand of ammunition anymore. They sell a bunch of different brands. We picked this up from our friends over at Freedom. They do donate ammunition to the channel, but they also give all the viewers a 6% discount. So look down below for that, that discount code. If you go there, it's good for anything in the store, either Freedom branded stuff or stuff like Winchester White Box 762 by 25 Tokarev. All right, now let's put a magazine into the pistol. There's a couple of things that are, that are noteworthy about this handgun, just the TT-33 in general, and this one's no different. If you put the pistol on half cock, which you can, it disables the trigger, a trigger cannot be pulled, and the slide can't be pulled to the rear. All right, so if you're carrying one of these with a hammer down on an empty chamber, make darn sure that you either carry it fully cocked or with a hammer, make sure it's all the way forward, because if you're carrying it like that, you go to grab your gun and you can't chamber around is because your gun's on half cock. So I'm going to go ahead and fully cock the pistol. Now I can chamber that first round and let's see how this little M57 shoots. Wow, what a great shooting little pistol, man. Oh, I like that, nine rounds. Okay, so we have a magazine release here just like the original. Here's another eight round magazine loaded up with some of the Winchester stuff. Lock it in, hit the slide release, just like a 1911. A lot of the features of this handgun are based around Browning actions, like 1903 Browning actions in the 1911, but it has its own distinct uh, 
features, which again, we'll talk about a little bit later when it's not so stinking cold and we're inside. Eight more, I should say nine more rounds of ammunition here. That's a lot of power in a very concealable package. I love the caliber, guys. The 762 by 25 is an amazing military caliber. Let's load up some more magazines, warm ourselves up in the Jeep, and do a little bit more shooting with the M57. Guys, I want to show you something that's really special. Now, if you remember our handguns, the five top handguns of World War II, I brought out one of my TT-33s, and it was a post-war gun. I believe it's built in 1949, or yeah, 1949, so it was built just after the war. The slide serrations were slightly different. Here's one you've never seen from my collection before. This is actually a 1940 TT-33. This gun would have likely served during World War II. Again, it was manufactured in 1940. Now, as I had mentioned, the grip on this pistol is one round shorter than that of the M57. So the magazine is just a little bit longer giving the M57 nine rounds versus the eight rounds of the standard TT-33. All right, so just like the M57, if you put the original on half cock, you got nothing. Full cock, you can do that, no magazine safety on this one. The M57, at least this variant, has a magazine safety. If you put the hammer all the way forward, not on half cock, you can pull it and cock it and load the weapon. Half cock, slurpy no worky. So again, that's something to keep in mind. All right, I'm gonna grab my little eight round magazine here. Here's a standard, and this is an all original World War II 1940 era magazine. Go ahead and load up this original TT-33 and see how the original shoots compared to the M57. The, I, I do like the M57 a little bit better because that slightly longer grip, my pinky tends to hang off the original TT33. What a sweetheart, and after all these years, perfect function. It's no wonder that so many Warsaw Pact nations adopted the TT-33 as their service handgun. Again, the Russians didn't get rid of it until they started to phase it out around 1952 in favor of the Makarov pistol, which is, again, one of my favorites. I'm going to go warm up and load up some magazines. Real quickly, guys, if you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to directly support us over at Patreon. At Patreon, you guys support us directly in return. We try to give some stuff back to you guys. We do original blog posts. We post behind the scenes information. We answer all of your private messages, but we also do things like give away $300 in ammunition every single month. Our friends over at Freedom Munitions give us that $300 to give away. So three lucky Patreons get $100 in ammunition every month, and you can use it to buy whatever ammunition on their website. And they don't just sell their own ammo, they sell other brands as well. Our friends over at Forge from Freedom, who make our MAC t-shirts, they give away five t-shirts every month to five lucky patrons. And again, you can pick whatever style of shirt that you want. But if you're a squad leader or above, you get special pricing over on the Copper Custom website on select items. But all of our patrons will post coupon codes every once in a while, once or twice a month, so all of our patrons can get a, a blowout deal on something like a flashlight, um, you know, red dot sights, firearms, all sorts of cool stuff, bags, rests, things like that. So that's how we try to give back to you guys for directly supporting us over on Patreon because YouTube has demonetized us and they're doing it not just to gun channels, but to airsoft channels, the knife channels, the gaming channels. So that's how we've decided to move forward and that's through direct support from you guys. But also guys, please consider supporting other folks out there that are content creators that you regularly consume their content as well and they have Patreon pages. Please consider supporting them as well. Thanks guys, we do appreciate that support. I have several different types of torque revs here and we're gonna talk about them because each one of these have different features than um, some of the later designs, including the M57. Now, as I've already pointed out on the M57, it has a slightly longer grip than an original Russian-produced TT-33. So it, it can't accommodate one extra round. You go from eight rounds of the original design to nine rounds of the M57's design. But real, what really 
interested me most about this handgun when I first stumbled across it over on the classic uh, firearms website was the fact that it had no external manual safety. This side of the gun is completely void of a safety. And this side of the gun is completely void of a safety. I'll show you the difference here in a second. Here is another Zestava. This is the M70A1. This handgun, I think, is still being imported both in 762 by 25 and 9mm. This is a 9mm version. But right away, if you take a look at this pistol, you'll notice it has a safety on the slide. It wasn't originally designed that way. The reason it's there is because of the Gun Control Act of 1968, the Sporting Purposes Clause, and the BATF regulations that require a gun to be of a certain weight and size and to have a safety. So that's why they've molested these pistols and put really awful looking safeties on them. Some are better than others. Now I will point out that this is not a hammer drop safety. Some of you will probably ask. It's just a trigger safety. This one also, like I said, shoots nine millimeter. You can see that the nine millimeter magazine is slightly shorter than the 7.62 by 25. Here's a Polish Tokarev. This is a Circle 11 pistol. And you'll notice right here, just below the slide stop and right behind the trigger, you have a manual safety. Again, it just ganks up the look of the gun. I don't like the way it looks. All right. It's just to me, it's visually unappealing because I know it doesn't belong there. Also note the serrations here on the slide of the Polish pistol. This one also has the shorter grip with an eight round magazine. And then I have two other examples of original Russian TT-33s. This is my 1940 gun. Of course, it has no manual safeties anywhere on the gun. A nice polished blue finish. And then this, you've seen before in my top five favorite handguns of World War II. This is my 1949 post-war gun. Now, this is the other thing I wanted to point out here for you guys really quick. If you take a look at the one in my right hand, which I'm moving up and down versus the one in my left hand that I'm moving up and down, the war production era guns had a very distinctive slide serration. If you take a look at the 1949 post-war gun, you'll notice it has more conventional slide serrations that we're kind of accustomed to seeing here in the United States. So they changed that in later designs. Just something I thought was noteworthy. I'm going to set these other pistols aside for now. And let's take a closer look at the M57, which is currently available. All right, so let's tear this little guy down. But first of all, I want to show you a few things externally about the gun. Uh, of course, it has no safety that you can see. Still has its lanyard loop, of course, has that extended grip with one extra round. But take a close look at the trigger on this gun. It may be hard to see, but there's a little tiny dingus, and I call it a dingus like a Glock dingus, a little tiny passive safety that has been machined, a slot has been machined into the original trigger, and this little device acts as a safety. Apparently, this, coupled with the magazine safety perhaps, is why this gun is legally importable under the Sporting Purposes Clause and the ETF's definition of it without a big, gaudy, ugly, otherwise manual safety on the gun. This little gun, guys, is just an absolute pleasure to shoot. I love me some Tucker of action. Such a controllable handgun for such a powerful cartridge. Keep in mind, this Winchester stuff is shooting that 85 grain bullet at about 1,645 feet per second, as they claim. I don't have a chronograph out here to test it because it's too stinking cold, but man, it's a little hot rod. Oh, what a beauty. Now, 
I wasn't the only one to pick one of these up. Jason, when he saw what I was doing, he had to have one too. So there are two of these in the Mac family, and I think uh, Jason should break his out and do a little bit of shooting with his as well. All right, guys, I'm always keeping an eye on Tim when he's buying these things, and he comes across some good deals, and he's always looking at classic firearms. When he found these things, I had to have one too at $199. You can't beat it. So when these things come in, they come in, in like a plastic bag, completely caked in cosmoline, inside and out. It took every bit of three hours or more to get it all out of there, but we did it. And so far, these things are functioning really well. So this will be the first shots out of the one that I picked up. <clears throat> Tim's magazine out of here. Ugh. There we go. <laughs> oh, what an absolute pleasure to shoot. Pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and tear this little bad boy down. First of all, I'm gonna drop the magazine out set that aside. It does have a magazine safety, so uh, I won't be able to lower the hammer. I'm going to look inside, and the weapon is clear. I'm going to go ahead and let that slide go home. And now, if you look right here, there's a little piece of sheet metal that's upturned on the end, and you can grab this typically with a fingernail or the rim of a case, pull it to the rear, and it will free the cross pin that holds the whole gun together, much like a 1911 or a Browning High Power, it frees it up so you can push it across. I'm gonna take my index finger and push from this side. The slide does not have to be in any particular position, unlike other handguns. You can just push on it, it'll pop out, and you can just pull that pin out. Now the slide and the frame will come apart simply by pushing the two apart. I'm going to set the frame aside for a second. I'm going to invert the slide assembly, and now you can see that internally, whoops, internally, this handgun looks very much like a 1911 right down to its drop link. Some torque revs will have non-captive recoil springs, and others, like this Model 57, will actually have a captive recoil spring. And by that, I mean it's all one contained unit. And I actually prefer this. It makes disassembly and reassembly much easier. So it's another feature I like of this pistol. You take it out like that. Now on the front of the gun, just like a 1911, you have a bushing. But typically on the 1911, you rotate the bushing to about that point, and you can pull it forward. You can't do that with the M57. You rotate it to the 12 o'clock position, and now your bushing comes out. Once your bushing is out, make sure that your Drop link is in the forward position. Push up on the barrel hood a little bit, wiggle it around, and it will slide forward out of the slide. Now you've completely disassembled the gun. Obviously, this, this gun borrows heavily from John Browning's design. I would say the 1911 is probably the most copied handgun in history right up there with the Walther PP. All right. There's one other thing I haven't shown you guys, actually two things. You can take the modular trigger system out of the Torkarev simply by pulling the trigger system out. There it is. That's really, really cool. That's one of the features that uh, I really like about the gun and the trigger mechanism itself is so insanely simple. It's just unbelievable, but that's typical Russian engineering. They're all about simplicity and reliability. The last thing that you can do to fully disassemble your Tokarev of pretty much any design, Chinese, Polish, Romanian, uh, Serbian, Yugoslavian, is to take the grip panels off. To do that, you're going to have to remove the right, my side right grip panel first, and then you can remove the left grip panel. You'll notice there are no screw holes going through these grip panels. That's because they're locked from the inside. I'm just going to use a ballpoint pen and see if I can get in there 
All right, there it is. And I'm going to rotate a lever, and I'll show you what this lever looks like once I get the grip panel off the gun. I rotate the lever, and I can pop the grip panel off. And now you can more clearly see how the grip panels are held in place on the TT33 series of pistols. This would be in the locked position. You can see a notch right here. It makes it very easy to get a small flathead screwdriver in there. And all you have to do is rotate it this way, which unlocks the grip panel and allows you to take it off. You must remove this grip panel first on the left-hand side of the pistol before you can remove the right grip panel because now it's a similar locking system, but it's done differently. And I'm gonna push down on this one and the grip panel falls right off again. You just have that rotating locking mechanism that holds the grip panel in place. Fairly ingenious design. And like I said, keeping with Russian tradition, very, very simple. All right, guys, let's go ahead and reassemble the M57. It's just as easy to put together as it is to take apart. The easiest part to do is to grab your trigger assembly and drop it in. Now, you may want to do this later because we do have to put the grip panels on first, but you can do it with it in place. All right, this little U-notch lines up with the lanyard loop, so you know that that grip panel goes on there, but this is the grip panel we take off first. We want the other grip panel in place before we put the first grip panel that we have to take off with the lanyard loop side. Oops. Helps to hold it from the back and just rotate it with your finger. You're not gonna be able to see me do that very effectively, but see how I've rotated that piece so it's in the locked position? Okay, so that grip panel is now locked in place. I can take this grip panel now, set it in place, but before I do that, I'll give you guys a quick peek here. Right here, there's just a simple leaf spring. When I put the magazine in, notice what happens right here. That little leaf spring pops up. That's your magazine safety. It's very, very simple. It's a single leaf spring. That allows the trigger now to move rearward and engage this here and fire the gun. When you take the magazine out, if you watch right here, take the magazine out. It's kind of hard to do handed because you have to pull the magazine out that little spring drops down just like that and now the trigger is rendered inoperable okay now that we have that out of the way let's put our grip panel on set the grip panel in, in place you're going to need a flathead screwdriver or something similar i'm going to use this ballpoint pen and now we have our trigger mechanism in place and both grip panels in place set this aside now we can put the slide together. Just like the 1911, it mimics. Slide everything in through the front, making sure that your drop link is in the forward position, like that. Take your bushing. Remember that it has to go on in the 12 o'clock position. And then just rotate it around until it lines up. And now you can take your recoil, your captive recoil spring, and put it in place. It's important to note that right here on the bottom of the piece that engages with the drop link, there's a U-shape. That U-shape mates up with the barrel. That goes down against the barrel. This rounded piece goes up. Put your drop link in the upward position. Slide your recoil spring into place. And you can leave your drop link in that position. Usually on 1911, you want that forward. With this particular pistol, it makes it a little bit easier, excuse me, to line things up. Now to put it all together. Make sure that your trigger pack is firmly seated. Take your slide and slide it over the rails. And just push it back. Now you're going to have to look through the hole here 
and look for that drop link to line up. Just pull it back ever so slightly. It should line up really easily and naturally if you put it in the position I showed you. And now you can just take your cross pin and push it through. You'll meet no resistance. There's no detent. Okay? And there's no, again, no particular position on the slide that it has to be in. Once you have it all the way through, everything's held together. The last step in reassembly is to push this sheet metal locking bracket across. It grabs that cross pin, and now the weapon is fully reassembled to decock it. Put the magazine in and carefully thumb the hammer down. All right, let's shoot this handgun the way it was shot back in the day, one-handed. Right, comrade? I tell you what, guys, you'd be in trouble if you were 30 yards away from me, even one-handed. It's a surprisingly ergonomic handgun to shoot, and it's got a really nice little trigger on it. Yep, I wouldn't want to get hit by it, but what a cool piece of history. Well guys, it's time to wrap things up. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the M57 currently being sold by Classic Firearms for $199. This handgun really excited me, as I mentioned, because it lacks a big, ugly, nasty manual safety. They've been as discreet as they could by putting the little dingus on the trigger. And overall, the gun looks really, really good, right down to the fact that it doesn't have big, gaudy import marks on it. They've been very, very discreet with the import marks. They're very small and on the bottom side of the trigger guard. If you take a look at other guns, like the Polish gun that I have, it's a beautiful handgun, with the exception of the fact that it has this horrible safety right here. But it has these really, really, really bad... <laughs> import marks. I mean, it just totally goofs up the appearance of the gun. So everything about this little M57 is, you know, just does it for me. Yes, it's a little bit longer than the original TT design, but I can't complain about that because I can actually get a full grip on it. Whereas if I grab one of my original designs, my pinky is right there on the edge. I mean, it's not really got a whole lot of you know, room left to grab a hold of the gun. The M57, the Serbian style guns definitely feel better in my hand. The guns are extreme pleasure to shoot. Now, when you get this handgun, it's going to be absolutely caked in Cosmoline. So much so, I could make an entire video about how we got the Cosmoline off these guns. Jason and I spent at least three hours cleaning these guns up, making sure that they're serviceable. Even in some cases, you're gonna to have to go into the firing pin, remove it, which it comes apart much like a 1911, just has a plate, a recoil spring and a firing pin in there. And you have to clean the Cosmoline out of there, otherwise the guns won't fire. I just want you guys to know that. You're gonna to have to thoroughly clean them. Uh, and there are other resources on the internet about how to get Cosmoline off guns without damaging them. But for 199, this is probably the cleanest example of a torque rift type pistol in its original chambering, 762 by 25, that I could find. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys want one, if you've been looking and holding off to wait for the right torque rev to pick up, this may be it. If you can live with the extra length in the pistol grip and you're not a purist and you want the shorter, just keep in mind, every other torque rev I've ever seen has some just awful looking manual safety on it. Guys, if you'd like to support us, another way here on the Military Arms Channel, a great way to do that is to swing by and check out our online store. It's called Copper Custom. We have a lot of great products at great prices, and we have a new auction site 
that you can find on our homepage. It's right up in the top navigation. On the auction site, we come across all sorts of cool stuff that gets traded in at our storefront. And sometimes we find really good deals on products that you will make available through the auction site. And in 2018, we would like to auction off certain guns here on the Military Arms Channel. They're actually featured in the video so you guys can have access to them. As for my M57, I'm not putting it up on the auction site. I love this thing so much, I ordered a second one. Guys, we've been uh, up and running now for 10 years and we simply couldn't have done it without you. So we're celebrating in 2018 our 10th year anniversary. If you go all the way back to the very beginning, you're gonna find a very funny video that's less than 10 seconds long of me shooting bowling pins with the Ruger LCP. Uh, 380. I think that's what the first video was. I deleted some of them. But anyway, 10 years, guys. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you for all those years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.